Hello, everyone, and welcome to exploring the landscape of open telemetry for WebAssembly. Uh, my name is Sayam Patak, and I work as principal developer advocate at Loft Labs, uh, founder of Cube Simplify and BuildSafe. And with me, I have. Yeah, hi everyone, I'm Shwai. I'm a developer relations engineer at uh, Couchspace. It's a NoSQL database platform. Some of you might have probably attended our workshop yesterday on being able to build a database first native API with Wasm Cloud, uh, which is also being covered by a couple of talks that were around American Express and how they're building an internal developer platform. Uh, outside of that, uh, we also do have a lot of custom integrations that we are building right now for WebAssembly, primarily for our database that runs on the edge called as Couchbase Lite. So there are some experiments that are being done uh, on that front as well with WebAssembly. But primarily, we are right now engaging a lot with the Wasm Cloud uh, integrations, uh, especially for the key value, uh, WASI key value pair, so that you can store custom data and do CRUD operations um, outside of just the key, key value uh, pair. So I would highly recommend that you can check out that particular workshop if you already didn't. But yeah, today's uh, talk is about uh, exploring the landscape of open telemetry. Uh, I would also like to probably just give a huge shout out to another talk that took place at the Observability Day, which is also around a similar topic around OTEL, uh, with a focus specifically on uh, how you can run OTEL inside of Wasm Cloud. Uh, that you can check out that uh, recording later from Victor from Cosmonic. But this is more of a high level uh, overview of the entire landscape. So it, it not only covers how you actually implement open telemetry just inside of WebAssembly itself, but also the applications that are powered by WebAssembly, right? So as we know that WebAssembly runs on so many different types of platforms. So we'll learn about uh, right from the beginning of uh, how you implement open telemetry and generate your logs matrices uh, for or applications that are built on top of WebAssembly powered platforms, but then we'll dive deeper into how you actually implement it for WebAssembly modules itself. Awesome. So uh, what we'll do is we'll start with uh, very, very basics, um, and we'll also highlight some of the challenges, and we'll go through the journey uh, of you know what are the challenges and then what are the existing stuff within the WebAssembly ecosystem that can be used today and what work is happening for the future, like what is in uh, phase one of the implementations and things like that, where uh, a lot of companies are investing in to make observability easier for WebAssembly modules. So uh, starting off with the observability basics. So observability, very simple, is just you have the application and you want to observe it. And there are a lot of reasons for that and there are a lot of stuff uh, within that. The three main pillars, are metrics, logs, and traces. Uh, so metrics is uh, something which can be aggregated over the period of time, where you have the timestamps, and it tells you uh, about the health and uh, the overall structure of your application, like how your application is performing over time, and you can aggregate different set of metrics ac across different time spans. Uh, then you have the logs. Obviously, everyone uh, knows when you write the applications, you have the logs, so you emit the logs out there, so you have the logs, which are very important when you want to troubleshoot your applications. Uh, and uh, then there are traces. Uh, so traces, uh, basically, you can capture different traces from the application. Uh, for example, if you, if you capture a particular trace, and then that particular trace can give you a lot of information about uh, the network, uh, traffic captured over there, where exactly in a particular request. So if uh, there is a particular request from point A to point B, if you capture the trace of that request, and if there is an error, then you, with the traces that are captured, it will be easier to get, okay, this particular place, there was an error, and uh, we got it because of the trace that was got captured. And I think like, just to probably add to that is that if you're looking at an entire login flow, so within login flow, there are multiple API calls being made, uh, multiple instantiations that you're making to the database, so a trace will basically capture all of them together, so it's very easy for you to be able to do your error handling. So that that's uh, basically metrics log traces. If you are familiar with the cloud native ecosystem, you might have heard of uh, you know Loki, Grafana Loki uh, as as your logs and traces. You have Jaeger for traces. You have uh, Prometheus that uh, captures a lot of metrics and then you know um, stores them. So it gives you overall observability, gives you a better understanding of your application. It helps you with better troubleshooting of your application. Uh, and then you can have a single query layer uh, that can act as maybe a dashboard or maybe a, a generic query layer where you can actually ask stuff like 
how it is happening and with the generative AI ecosystem, the query layers are also becoming more English language so that you can just ask your observability system what is wrong with it and you get stuff from uh, different parts of it with the matrix logs and traces. There is another one uh, which, which is popular, which is called profiling. Profiling gives you the uh, performance metrics of the application which is there. Uh, so right now, which version of your application is, and then tomorrow, the next version, and between those two versions, how your application is performing, so it gives you those flame graphs. So that is another one, but uh, the key pillars are uh, kind of uh, metric logs and traces. Uh, just another view, uh, let's say you uh, are an uh, app developer, you have an application, the application uh, is a URL. So when you when you type Google.com or any website, uh, so you hit the URL and you are the creator of that application. So that application is user facing, and a lot of users access that application. Some of the users start getting error to that uh, to the application which is there or to a particular uh, web page in the uh, in the application. So observability helps you to find out all the uh, all the answers to the questions like what failed, when it failed. Uh, if there was a slowness, then where was the slowness, uh, and what, how many number of 500, uh, 500 400 uh, kind of errors, and if there are any DDoS attacks. So you will be able to get the holistic view of uh, your application and the systems. Why I say systems? Because uh, you get the metrics, because when you have the systems like Kubernetes, Kubernetes itself is a very complex ecosystem, and you need the metrics for the system to be healthy as well. So when you have that and the application, so you'll be having both uh, application and the system for which the observability ecosystem helps. And currently, WebAssembly, if yeah, now you have heard a lot about WebAssembly today in, in, at WasmCon, uh, so you might know that WebAssembly obviously started off with the browsers, runs in the browsers, uh, edge application, server application with the WASI, uh, whole WASI stuff coming in, so it runs on the servers as well. And on the cloud, uh, you have projects like SpinCube, uh, so which helps you run WebAssembly alongside of the containers as well. Uh, now, the, the issue with WebAssembly is that, uh, you know, we, we always say the, the key features of WebAssembly, it's fast, near native speeds, um, it can run on any platform, and it is platform independent. But that particular feature of platform independent, that it doesn't know where it is running, it doesn't know about the host, makes it difficult for the observability. So usually what happens is, um, in, in an observability framework, usually you'll be having an agent, and that particular agent will be if you talk about the Kubernetes ecosystem, uh, I, I always take the, that reference because I'm I'm cloud native guy. You can see Kubernetes right here. Uh, so you have uh, Kubernetes. Uh, you have uh, it. You might have the logging agents or the monitoring agents as part of the sidecar or as part of the daemon sets that are running on the nodes. But with WebAssembly, what happens is unfortunately the WebAssembly modules do not know about the host. So when they do not know about the host, they do not have access to the system. And with WebAssembly, since I talked about metrics, metrics needs, and even traces, you need timestamps, you, uh, you need exact timestamp because when you're troubleshooting, you need when things fail at what particular moment, then only it's helpful. Uh, there are things that you might have heard uh, called the capabilities in WebAssembly. So you can enable some of the capabilities to for the WASI to interact uh, with all these um, timestamp or enabled system clock, but there are uh, trade-offs for that. Um, and also, when we talk about observability and monitoring, it has to be in a continuous manner. So you need a full, uh, you know, kind of connection always enabled uh, for the system clocks, IPC calls, and you want to always keep getting the metrics. So these are some of the key challenges that makes observability hard for WebAssembly that you can cannot use existing tools as it is uh, for the WebAssembly modules. Uh, now we'll be talking about some of the existing uh, tooling that helps to overcome these challenges. Just before that, uh, a quick introduction to Open Telemetry. Uh, so Open Telemetry is a project, uh, is a collection of open source APIs, SDKs uh, that helps you uh, in instrumenting the application. So you, you have your application, you can instrument the application using open telemetry, uh, and you have that total collector and stuff. Um, so it has become an industry standard, and most of the WebAssembly tooling is also kind of focused on how they can uh, push the metrics to uh, OTIL. So that is where it is, and if you want to. <laughs> yeah, so 
of course, um, one of the things is that the maturity of the hotel with the WebAssembly integration is still fairly new. So while we'll explore all of the different projects that are now supporting hotel as part of their WebAssembly runtimes, um, one of the few things to also keep in mind is that a lot of the libraries that are currently supported for hotel, they will soon also be able to compile to WebAssembly. And uh, of course, one thing to also keep in mind is that when it comes to using hotel with WebAssembly, if you are able to actually understand the WebAssembly text format or the WIT, that's also a lot more easier to understand than the actual assembly code itself. And um, of course, as we'll kind of, kind of cover, what are the different ways in which different WebAssembly runtimes are actually using open telemetry? Uh, they are all focused a bit differently. And we'll also understand that what are the limitations which Sayam covered when it comes to like trying to understand that why we cannot directly just get metrics from a WebAssembly module directly and how uh, that is overcome with the current tooling that we'll have uh, where we are having hotel plugins for different WebAssembly runtimes. So we'll have an overlook of, of that. But kind of taking one step uh, back and also covering what I initially uh, shared was that before we jump into WebAssembly uh, and how we are actually collecting open telemetry data uh, from WebAssembly modules itself, let's also just take a step back and understand how today you can use open telemetry for, uh, for applications that are powered by WebAssembly. So here, for example, Blazor, it's an open source uh, framework that's built on top of .NET, and you can very easily build intuitive UI applications. So normally you'll have like a backend, Blazor backend, and a Blazor frontend, which are both powered by WebAssembly. So in this case, uh, if you want to get logs and uh, metrics about your application, so you're going to be using the .NET Open Telemetry uh, SDK and the library to be able to generate your instrumentation uh, for the ASP.NET backend. And similarly, you can also use that same uh, .NET SDK for open telemetry and get your traces or your metrics even for the front end that's actually running on the browser. And in this case, you'll actually be able to see the traces uh, that, are, that, in, that are getting generated. For example, if you're clicking a button, a UI button on your web application, then you'll be able to see that trace getting generated and it, re it will be available to you directly inside of your browser. So that's how uh, today you are using applications, uh, web applications primarily, or even like software applications, and how uh, like so over here like one thing one thing to keep in mind is that we're not actually concerned about the WebAssembly module itself. Primarily, that's only for the architecture of how .NET get compiled into the WASM module and then it's able to run on the browser. But uh, we just want to kind of also highlight that how you can use Open Telemetry for applications that are running with uh, WebAssembly. Uh, another one is, of course, uh, a lot of you might have probably heard from the Fastly folks. So Fastly Compute is a platform that runs natively uh, built on top of WebAssembly, where all of the functions that you write get compiled into WebAssembly, and then they're running on some sort of an edge node for very fast compute. Uh, now, there is a de uh, dedicated open telemetry library for the compute applications. Um, an example of that is this NPM package for the Fastly uh, JS integration. So in this case, what would happen is that you integrate this particular open telemetry uh, library inside of your Fastly Compute application that you have built. And you can, of course, test it out uh, locally, or you can uh, deploy it on the Fastly cloud. Um, and here, whenever you instantiate the application, uh, as soon as you begin to uh, capture those traces, you'll be able to capture those inside of the, the hotel collector, and then you can export it and expose it to any uh, hotel provider. Um, for example, it could be you know Jaeger or Prometheus for the metrics. So we have a quick demo as well. Uh, we can probably just play this once. Um, so here you, you're seeing this that I'm running this application uh, at the port 7676 and when I run this uh, you're able to see that I generate the logs and here what I'm basically pointing out is the span ID so within that span I generated it and this is basically the telemetry.js file uh, which is basically showing you uh, the open telemetry character. So this is one of the examples that's already uh, inside of the uh, open JS uh, telemetry uh, SDK for JavaScript so you can have a look at that. Uh, but yeah, so so far what we have given you an overview of how you can leverage open telemetry for WASM powered platforms. But now we will move towards how do you also use open telemetry for uh, core WebAssembly applications itself. That is where we are trying to get metrics from all of the function calls that are being made inside of WebAssembly. 
So I'll let Sam take over now. Yeah, so uh, WASI logging is uh, one. Uh, so WASI logging is a WASI API for emitting log messages. And uh, the goal is uh, to have a simple logging API that you can use as STD, ERR, uh, and have the logging as part of the outputs within your applications. Um, it has, like you have uh, various inputs, you have level context and message. The level are the general uh, stuff which is there as trace, debug, info, warn, error, critical. So these are the different levels. Context is just the general string and with a uh, certain message that you have. So. Uh, the output goes STDERR, that works. I can quickly show you a demo. So um, there is this. So this WASI logging is uh, once you inst once you have WASM edge runtime. So uh, the WASI logging library is the native part of it. Earlier you have to have it as part of the external plugins that you have in your home directory plugins folder. But now you don't have to do that. Um, now you can just do uh, the main. Main is. Just simple, you have WASI logging demo and you have the function main. Uh, main is the uh, lib.rs. So you can see it's just simple. Uh, you have the log, you have uh, different levels, you have context, and then you have the message. So trace, debug, info, warn, critical, um, and you will be able to use that. Um, running it would be so Wasm Edge, I've already compiled this. So Wasm Edge, and you can see uh, the different uh, log levels that are coming as part of it. So that is one which is happening uh, as part of the logs, uh, which is there, which is for the Wasi logging. Let's go back to the slides. So like the next thing, of course, is the observe SDK. So primarily what we are also kind of focusing on is that, as we know, that with WASI, uh, and this is going back to the fact that when we talk about the, the guest functions, right, the guest functions inside of the WebSim module, they cannot directly themselves actually expose the logs. So we're looking at ways in which uh, we are able to still make a note of all of the function calls, whether it's like the standard input output functions uh, that the host is actually making inside of the WebSim module and how we can actually capture that. So the Dialypso company, which is working on a lot of, uh, a lot of the uh, different um, toolings around uh, WebAssembly, uh, they came up with this Observe SDK, which allows you to basically um, take, take note of all of the function calls, all of the memory allocations that take place um, inside of the WebAssembly module, and then you can expose it uh, to any open telemetry collector, whether it's, uh, of course, open telemetry or uh, dedicated uh, you know, uh, collectors like Datadog as well. Yeah. Uh, so the thing to note over here is uh, what I was telling, telling with the with respect to the challenges that comes with the observing WebAssembly modules. So this is these are some of the companies which are actually working uh, to make things simpler. Uh, Observe SDK is open source, and how it works is uh, so you have your WebAssembly modules. You will be able to instrument the code using the Observe API. So observe API and then observe SDK has the adapters. So you have different adapters like for Zepkin, for Datadog, for Otel. So that adapter will be uh, kind of uh, send the metrics to the open telemetry. So and um, with observe API, there are two things, which is one is the manual instrumentation and one is the auto instrumentation. So uh, Dialypso provides you a way to auto instrument your application as per what they have written. But you can also do the manual instrumentation. Uh, obviously, when, when we say manual instrumentation, it's tricky. So you need to uh, have write a different set of uh, log, trace, span, uh, and add those functions in, inside your code. And then you will be able to instrument that. And with auto instrumentation, I think it's an API key that they give you. And then you use that API key to do the auto in instrumentation of the code. I think uh, there is this demo that probably will show you some of the things. 
so you have, uh, yeah, this, this particular thing is just uh, enabling Go. So this is done on Killer Coda so that anybody can try. So right now it is just uh, changing the Go version, uh, upgrading the Go version because it was 1.18. And now it is installing Va0 um, as the uh, WebAssembly runtime. And now it is getting uh, a particular auto-instrumented WebAssembly application. So this particular thing is there. And now uh, whatever the code is there, we write. And here you can see uh, inside the adapter. So there are a lot of adapters you can see over there. Uh, but for our particular scenario, uh, we yeah, are using the Otel, Otel STD out. So yeah, the Otel STD out is being used as the adapter. Um, and you have the adapter, you are initializing the adapter, starting that, um, and then you have uh, the Va0, um, you are having the snapshot for that, and you are also sending that to the Va0 runtime after initializing, um, initializing that. And when now we run it, there was another go module that you have to import. So when you run it, uh, it should give you uh, a lot of instrumented, a lot of metrics uh, with respect to traces and spans, you'll be able to see. Yeah, here it is. So you can see different, uh, different set and you can see the spans over there in the second tra with the trace ID and all the stuff that is happening, all the calls that is happening. And this particular small function was for uh, counting of the vowels. So counting of the vowels, auto-instrumented, and that's what it generates. All right, and of course, like as we are talking about some of the other toolings as well. So one of the existing ones, probably uh, Wasm Toolkit, is from the Loophole Labs folks. Um, so the idea behind uh, this Wasm Toolkit is that you will basically take your WebAssembly module, and then you'll convert it into a text format, and then you can add manual labels on top of it, and then uh, you basically use dwarf functions and then recompile it down into WebAssembly so that now you're able to see the different logs that the host function basically generates. So this is another uh, example of how uh, there's a different strategy involved. But of course, uh, one thing to always keep in mind is that even with the Va0 approach, the main thing was that the WebAssembly runtime, that's what is actually responsible for generating these logs. Because as you know that one of the limitations is that the guest functions themselves cannot actually generate these metrics, right? So uh, it's the responsibility of the um, WebAssembly runtime so that it can uh, take note of all of the different um, function calls or input-output operations that are happening right now or the memory, memory allocations that are taking place within the host function to be able to capture those and then export them as the traces metrics. So another, like this is an ex example of another tool that has a slightly diff different approach. And the great thing about Wasm Toolkit is that it is actually a vendor and a WebAssembly uh, runtime agnostic. So you can basically use it with whatever WebAssembly runtime that you want to use. And here, here's an, another example where you can see that this is being used with one of the Go functions and you are able to see the metrics for each and every different function call, as well as, for example, if you would have, uh, if we would have had spin, uh, not only will we be able to capture the trace for the actual function call, but if you're initializing the key value pair, that will also get captured uh, by manually instrumenting the dwarf uh, functions inside of that. Uh, but that, of course, now we'll look at a couple of examples which are much more focused on uh, some of the uh, work that has been done by the two major players in the cloud native WebAssembly ecosystem, the first one being Wasm Cloud. So Wasm Cloud um, also has an open telemetry library support where uh, the Wasm Cloud host will be able to then, uh, with a push-based protocol, will be able to um, capture all of the traces, metrics, and then you, it will basically connect with any hotel collector, and you'll be able to capture metrics about your open, uh, about your Wasm Cloud uh, instance and the WebAssembly component that you're actually running inside of the Wasm Cloud environment. And similarly, uh, Spin, which is another popular project from Fermion, uh, they also have support for hotel as a plugin. Uh, in this case, um, what you're also, a similar thing that's happening is that the host functions inside of the spin runtime, so when you're running the spin runtime and you're having the WebAssembly component, the host functions, whatever uh, traces that are getting generated, it will expose them with the help of the spin runtime. And similarly, uh, like you have for spin runtime, you can also actually do this for spin cube. 
So here's an example of how you would basically put it in spin cube. So this is the YAML definition where, we'll, where you'll see that we are having the spin app resource. And uh, this will actually act as the executor and will send the telemetry data. So of course, this will help you to initialize your uh, spin app uh, inside of the Kubernetes cluster uh, as part of the spin cube application. And this will help you to generate those metrics. So whether you're running a spin application in a non-Kubernetes environment or you're using it as spin cube, both of them have uh, plugins that you can leverage. So of course, throughout this entire uh, entire tutorial or this workshop, uh, we have of course mentioned about one of the biggest limitations of that being that the functions, uh, which are the guest functions, they themselves don't have the capability to be able to uh, generate these logs. And either you have to then do manual instrumentation uh, to be able to actually do that, whereas uh, with auto instrumentation, it's not possible. So that's where one of the up upcoming works uh, with another WASI uh, proposal, which is being run by uh, or being led by Caleb from Fermion, is around WASI Observe, which will allow the guest functions to automatically do instrumentation for you. Now, this is still at a very early stage. It, it is still technically at phase one. And um, of course, that, that's the reason that we don't have that capability, whether we talk about Wasm Cloud or even uh, with Spin. But as this particular WASI uh, Observe proposal grows, uh, we'll be able to see um, much more of auto instrumentation on the guest uh, function end as well. And that's the current kind of landscape of how the open telemetry uh, looks like. So of course, we covered the different tools uh, like uh, you know um, Wasm Cloud. We, we covered about uh, Spin and how they handle open telemetry. But of course, if you're not using Spin or Wasm Cloud, we have the capabilities with uh, the Observe SDK, which is kind of more platform agnostic or WebAssembly runtime agnostic, and uh, WASI debugging and the logging. Uh, so probably if you want to con conclude, uh, same. Yeah, so um, that's that's the whole crux that you, there are challenges, but then there are these companies, Wasm Cloud, uh, which is led by Cosmos, of the folks by Cosmonic, you have Fermion, you have Dilip, so all of these are working, and most of them are actually working in a collab collaborative way for building the uh, observability easier for the WebAssembly modules, whether it's the guest functions, host functions, already stuff is being uh, done with the runtime. You can just enable that uh, with the runtimes and that, that should work out of the box. But for the guest functions, uh, you have these proposals like the observe, uh, Vazi observe, uh, which is in phase one, which would which obviously would continue to grow and make sure that you have that interaction in so that you are able to run and get the proper instrumentation, uh, manual or automatic, from the host uh, guest functions as well for, for the WebAssembly, uh, from the WebAssembly modules. So yeah, and so as as we conclude again, uh, thank you so much. First of all, uh, this was actually on a very short term basis because we got to confirm our session just like three four hours ago. So we kind of quickly put together what uh, felt because of course I think at WasmCon so far we didn't really see any other observability related talks. But at the same time, there are so many uh, folks that are attending WasmCon and uh, they come from enterprise organizations. So of course one of the biggest questions that will come for organizations who are trying to adopt WebAssembly is the fact that, okay, now we have kind of solved the way to be able to run WebAssembly in production. There are so many different platforms that can do it for you. Uh, but of course, now the second step to that is that when you take WebAssembly to production, how do you monitor the performance of your applications? And that's where telemetry and, uh, like, that's where open telemetry and monitoring of your application really plays a huge role. So I hope that with this particular talk, you at least get the lay of the land of what, uh, is the current status of open telemetry support for WebAssembly. There are a lot of different other platforms that are currently built on top of Otel, like Cygnos, which is basically an open telemetry platform. So once you get your logs from Otel, uh, from the Otel collector, from the connector, you can basically then pass those into a database like ClickHouse, and then you can have ob uh, observability dashboards where, where you can um, uh, kind of uh, look at all of the traces and you can uh, monitor your applications in a much more uh, bigger fashion. So we didn't get enough time to basically build that uh, Cygnos uh, collector. So it's an open source project, by the way. But that's the next step, that once you capture all these metrics, you can store them in any database. Uh, in the case of Cygnos, they use ClickHouse as a database. And uh, you can store all of the logs and then view them and understand them uh, from the Cygnos dashboards. 
so yeah, I, I hope that uh, you can you got a kind of a broad overview of open telemetry. And of course, if there were questions in your company that okay, can you do observability with WebAssembly? So the answer is yes, and you can do it in a really good fashion as well if you're using projects like Spin. Uh, but with that, we'll conclude, and you can connect with us on our X Twitter handles, and we'll be here to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so for example, if you're specifically uh, trying to get the metrics for any application code that you're running with uh, Spin, for example, like let's say you have built an HTTP service that is being powered by Spin. So you can use the inbuilt plugin that's provided by Spin uh, to be able to generate the traces and metrics. So in that case, you're not really making any change uh, to your application itself because the latest versions of Spin, like right from, I think, 2 dot, uh, or 0 0.2, is it 0 point, or is it 2, two probably 2.4, two dot dot yeah, 2.4, uh, there is native support added for open telemetry. So you just have to ensure that you have the plugin installed, and you can then instrument that particular function. So of course, I mean, there might be rest of your entire function code or your application code that will use the standard open telemetry SDKs that are out there, but when it comes specifically to your uh, application code that's being powered by WebAssembly, uh, you have all these plugins that you can just insert in your application and not have to change anything drastically there. So that, that's the reason why these plugins were built in first place. Of course, um, if you're not perhaps using Spin or, uh, for that matter, Wasm Cloud, uh, then you can, of course, you might have to add additional, uh, you know, uh, support with the help of the Observe SDK, which is also like very super simple to use because they have support for multiple languages, Rust, Golang, uh, JavaScript. Like they have SDKs in multiple languages. So you just install the SDK and you uh, basically wrap around whatever function calls that uses a WebAssembly module. You use the Dilepso SDK to then uh, get the traces, and you can uh, build build the connector uh, for either Jaeger or Open Telemetry and expose those uh, traces and the metrics. So I, I think like the tooling allows you not to have to change your application code too much, uh, and just use these SDKs out of the box. Uh, so just to probably understand the question, uh, which was the proposal are you talking about? Was he observed? Was he observed? Uh, that's an interesting question because I only got to know about the was he observed proposal here, <laughs> so I'm not <laughs> entirely sure. But what I can probably say is that if if we can probably get in touch with Caleb um, from, from Fermion, Fermion, he might be able to because he's like the lead and he's like the only lead right now into the proposal. So he yes, he's yeah. supposed to be here. Or if not right now, then he'll be at the Fermion booth throughout the KubeCon. So. Yeah, but that's a good question. <laughs> yeah. When you're talking about scanning, you're talking about the source code, right? Not the bytecode. Yeah, source code. code. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how automatic how it works uh, internally, uh, but um, the if you see on the if you go to the Dilipso uh, GitHub repository, uh, there is something which is called IOTA examples the, over there, and there they have the code uh, where they have the instrumented like where they show you how to do the manual instrumentation um, and adding those all functions and all that stuff, and auto instrumentation does that automatically for you. That's the that's the only thing. Yeah, I'm. I'm not really too sure how uh, how much difference it it would be, but I I do believe that their auto instrumentation is the way where they uh, they would like to build a business around and provide something out of the box for your applications. Where like he asked, you do not have to change anything and you just auto instrument your code and you get everything out of the box. And on the other hand, manual instrumentation would be would be would be a route where you. 
still have some stuff available as, as part of the SDK that you can use and uh, build your own kind of uh, instrumentation because they give you a key and I don't know if, uh, if it's free forever or if yeah, it's free it's for some time and you know, some stuff like that.